It is three in the morning Pacific time and I'm getting ready to go to the airport. My flight from Seattle goes first to Chicago. So I have a layover in Chicago, then a layover in Frankfurt. Then I arrive in Riga, Latvia. Then I sleep the night and I have a bus that takes me to uh, an area in Europe that officially is Russian territory. It's called Kaliningrad, which used to be Konigsberg. So I'm off to a great start. The first thing that happened after I passed the security checkpoint is my flight got delayed by five hours. This meant that I wasn't making it to the connecting flights in Chicago or in Frankfurt. It was pretty underwhelming at 7 a.m. after not sleeping since, since 3. So I was on the phone with United for a minute here and I got a different flight booked with a different airline so that I make it to Chicago to my connecting flight to Frankfurt. At this point, I am not concerned about exiting Russia once I'm there because Russia has not restricted entrance or exit to anyone based on their nationality or citizenship, which is not the case with the European Union. European Union countries have banned Russians from entering months ago. Latvia and Lithuania have stopped issuing visas to Russians hours after the war broke out. I am a Russian with a Russian passport. There shouldn't be an issue with me entering back through Lithuania to get to Latvia because I am also an American citizen with American passport. So I'm hoping that Lithuanian border would have to have a really good reason to not let uh, a U.S. citizen in. Not going wasn't really an option because I haven't seen my mom for four years. I was supposed to go see my family in 2020 and then the pandemic happened. After that many countries required vaccination certificates even to enter for a, for a layover for quite a while. I didn't want to vaccinate, so because of that, I was cut off from my family for that much longer. Latvia required vaccination certificates until September 2022. So all the recent events and my route considered, I'm only now able to go there and see my mom and my grandma again. Ihre Sicherheit getroffen und unser Cockpit und Kabinenpersonal ist geschult, Ihnen bei jeder Gefahr hier zu leisten. In wenigen Minuten werden wir Sie mit den So, I'm finally in Frankfurt after the 8 hour flight and I decided not to record an update video in O'Hare Airport in Chicago because I was it was a close call for making the transfer there. I had little time to get on the next plane. Now I have a three hour layover until my plane to Riga and the flight to Riga is two and a half hours and I'm just gonna have to cross my fingers that my baggage makes it to Riga that I actually find it there on the conveyor belt when I arrive because because of the original, the first flight that got changed, they basically just said like, yeah, we'll just try our best and hopefully your baggage gets there and if it doesn't, just file a claim. So there's that. And if I don't get the baggage, then my, my bus to Kaliningrad is the day after I arrived to Riga. So I arrived to Riga on the 21st and on the 22nd is my nine hour bus. So that's that. 
We're gonna have to see. I am the first person here to board to the Riga flight. It's very early here in Frankfurt and the airport is very slow. And one thing I realized is that probably nobody here realizes that I'm going to Russia. Like the guy at the border asked me what the purpose of my visit is. And I said that I'm visiting family, but like my bus ticket to Russia is not registered, you know, anywhere here and with the border. And so, yeah, it's just an interesting detail. For some reason, it makes me wonder. I haven't experienced any um, hostility from Americans for being Russian. But I do wonder if it's different in Europe. Um, I've heard different things and, you know, mi mixed feedback on being a Russian in Europe right now. So, we'll see. I'm really tired. <laughs> um, it's not too bad, but I did sleep one hour on the night before my original flight left my flight to Chicago, from Seattle to Chicago. Um, I worked that day. I work for a JDM dealership right now, Japanese Domestic Motors, and we were bringing cars from the port the day before I was leaving. <laughs> like that, that night I had to get up at 3 a.m. and go. Um, and then, so that was, uh, almost four hour flight to Chicago. Then like hour and a half in a security line in Chicago. Then um, the flight to Frankfurt, Germany, about eight hours. And now three hours until I board airplane to Riga. That'll be two and a half hour flight. The reason I'm recording this video is to let more people know what it's like to travel to and out of Russia today for those who want or need to know. My friends' reactions ranged from surprised to shocked when they found out I was going to Russia, even though I explained to them that my folks are from Moscow, which is about one Poland away from the war zone. and. I explained that Russia hasn't restricted any entrance or exit and that the only obstacle for citizen of any country for that matter at this time would be that not many public transport companies are still doing business with Russia right now. Some companies actually choose to stop doing business with Russia uh, for ideological reasons. Other companies are afraid to be socially cancelled and they stop doing business with Russia and supporting Russian economy. Some companies cannot do it anymore because Russia has been cut off from the SWIFT banking service system. SWIFT is a system that provides transfers in between banks internationally, which also reminds me that once I get to Russian soil, I'll be cut off from all of my money because all my accounts are in American banks and all American banks are boycotting all Russian banks right now. One thing I have to say is that Russian airlines cannot process American bank cards right now or foreign bank cards for what I know. Um, at least not from countries that have sanctioned Russia for sure and I couldn't really figure out a good way around that for a foreigner at the moment. I had to have somebody from Russia 
pay for my airline ticket to Moscow because of that. I believe there are payment processors with whom a foreigner, a non-Russian citizen can get a prepaid card. I think Union Pay is one of those that the Chinese payment provider. I have never used that. I don't know how perfect that is. So I'm not advocating for it. And I was in Riga at last, even though my travel wasn't over. It felt good to sleep at night. I'm now waiting for my cab to go to the Riga bus station to board a bus to Russia. When me and other passengers were standing in a line while the bus driver was checking our tickets, a man with a stuffed bag over his shoulder was passing by. He noticed the destination written on the bus and he asked us if we were actually going there, even though the answer was obvious. Then he yelled out loudly that we are out of our minds and that we're all going to die there because America is going to bomb Russia and wipe it off the face of our planet. We are approaching the border. The driver is about to wake everyone up. It is prohibited to film at the border. And it is 4 a.m. I have not been able to sleep on the bus. It took about two hours to pass the border. Tell me if it looks like I passed the border on the Nur Quattro.
So I'm in the airport in Kaliningrad now. Um, as soon as I entered Russia, all of my American bank cards were cut off because Russia has been sanctioned. So no bank cards work here. I had some cash on me and that's how I got to the airport. There were, there were a couple of drivers that were willing to drive me for euros. Even though, you know, the nine hour bus ride, it's really re-energizing to be home. You know, no matter what's on your mind, I am probably about six hours away from seeing my mom right now and that is kind of a big deal so yeah Шановному Тадею Михайловичу в день 60-річчя від колективу відділу праці і зарплати долотний Дрогобичський долотний завод. 11 рік. Подожди, это, как это может быть 11 рік? А, 71 год. 71 рік. Дышать на лаву, ее надо есть сразу же. Я сейчас ее помою, тебе на блюдечко положу. Вот тебе масло. Так, ну вот тебе два хлеба. А вот это тебе пирожное с брусникой. Пирожное с брусникой. Будешь кушать, да? Хорошо. Хорошо. А этот виноград, виноградный немножко. 